we have a pedal that was that needs to be swapped out for this pedal just because the other two pedals match this one and this one's way too big so what I'm going to attempt to do is I want to transfer this little bracket to this piano so what we have here is we have these little nubs that stick out you can see as this turns it's the bracket that's moving and those nubs that stick out of the pedal are not so I want to get the pin here to go through there and then cut off at the right point so that it'll fit correctly on that bracket so let's do it first let's get it out of here I'm going to do it upside down like that because it'll the angle of how that hits the side of this little tool here will want to will want to turn it that direction whereas if it were like that the angle would make it come up and I just I think it'll work better because there's a lot of force there this this tool doesn't always work so let's You know what we're gonna do? So if I if I were to push that in, that's just gonna bend it because it's not because there's some force that is going kind of that direction because of that angle. So maybe I'll try putting a little shim in there. Trying to fill in that gap right there. Maybe I'll do another one on the other side. Just from experience, I guarantee if we don't put a shim in there, that pin will bend and it still might. So what I'm looking for is I just want to make sure that that pin, as I start to put pressure on it, I want to make sure that pin is totally parallel with the tool. And if it starts to bend, stop and change something. Bent the pin. Okay, got it there. Now let's. Uh, I use the same pin. Okay, the way this works, it's it's kind of like a weld, sort of. It's it's a kind of a poor man's weld, maybe. Is this goes through? So you can see the diameter of the non-fluted portion is 155 thousandths. The diameter of the fluted portion is 165 thousandths. So if I go in there with a drill bit that's maybe 100 and 60, maybe 162, something like that. This portion will go through freely. Like this. But as soon as it hits the fluted portion, as you force it through with this tool, the, uh, the fluted portion, it, it like, it bends the metal. Like the, like you force it through and the metal just kind of like gets chewed up inside just that two to five thousandths of an inch that it that it has it bites in and it and it just stays and it's almost like it's welded in there and then it the pedal and the pin act as one unit like this where the pedal and these aren't really pins those are more like I said more like nubs they kind of act as one unit so let's find a let's find a drill bit all right, the crucial dimension here that we want to duplicate is from the back of the horn to the center of the pin.
which in this case, just let me throw that out there. It doesn't really matter what the number is. We're just going to duplicate this, but the number happens to be, well, almost exactly three inches. So, let's see, how am I going to do that? Make my little cross hatch for the pin for the drill. All right. I think we're good. When drilling wood, you want to go fast. And when drilling metal, you want to go slow. And it can't hurt. We'd probably be OK in this instance without lubrication. But when drilling through metal, it's not a bad idea to use just a little bit of lubrication. I think, I think we might be okay there. there in the in the cross hatch I'm putting quite a bit of weight. Drill press would work too. Maybe I should have done a drill press. That'll probably be good. Maybe that was, maybe that was actually serendipitous that the that this drill bit was a little bit smaller, 155 or whatever, as opposed to 160, 162, since we since we only have these more narrow edges to to go through.
Okay, so those little nubs are kind of pointy. So that would probably be easier to duplicate the pin outside. Normally, at this point, I just put it back on the on this tool and just force it back in. And then, like I said, this fluted portion would just kind of grab in the holes and it would just, you know, essentially just tighten up. It would make the pin and the pedal essentially one unit. But this is kind of a specialty thing where we're doing these nubs. So we're going to, let's decrease the size of this. So it looks like uh, that overall is about an well, inch and a quarter, just slightly under inch and a quarter. And we're taking it down from almost two inches. So three quarters of an inch divided by two, what is that, three eighths? Taking off three eighths off of either side. Three eighths is 375. Take it down that much on each side. I don't know if a pencil will mark on this or not. Leave it a little bit long, I guess, and then I can always kind of sand it down after. So I could cut it or I'll use this tool here. Okay, so we are, we're hoping, we're shooting for an inch and a quarter, and we're an inch and a quarter plus another 65 thousandths, which is a good thing that we didn't go the wrong way the other direction. So I think, I think what I'll do is I'll put it in here. We also want to duplicate that shape, that kind of conical shape. So let's go over here.
long, so... I wonder if it would still work in here. Yeah, looks like it would. It looks like even if we're just 65 thousandths too long, it'll. I think it'll still work just fine in there. Get that pressure straight this way in every direction. So there it's it's going down a little bit. I want to get it totally parallel to the jig tool. Three hundred and ten thousand sticking out there, and this one is three hundred, so we're good. The way I like to tighten that, I like it to, to have some good friction. Not so much that it that it impedes the motion, but uh, a good amount. Make sure the set this screw here is tight, so that'll clamp down the clamp this down, so that as this pivots, it doesn't un unscrew this little by little. Every time it goes down, it would unscrew it a little bit more, a little bit more, and then eventually become wobbly. I think, I think that's good. The only thing that I see is it looks like if we were to put that down, it looks like it's slightly askew off to one direction. So maybe I drilled this hole, you know, slightly up higher than, than that one. So I think the solution for that will be to uh, hopefully, my hope is that when this is screwed down into the bottom panel of the piano, we'll be able to compensate for that by kind of twisting it and then tightening it down to, to kind of compensate it, make it a little bit more, you know, to make it straight. So the bracket will no longer be straight. Yeah. But other than that, I think we're, I think we're in good shape. All of these dimensions are, I think, right on. Got the one hole. Oh, and then we need it. Yeah, that's where the, oh, uh, this is, it's so this, this one? one yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think for that, what we'll probably do is we'll probably just drill, just drill right through it. We probably don't need to continue the video yeah. for drilling a hole there. 